Hey my loves, how's it going? I hope everyone's doing all kinds of well. Welcome back to a new reading vlog. I didn't vlog last week because I had nothing really of substance to tell you, nothing exciting happened, but it's now Sunday and I do have something quite exciting to tell you now. And that thing is that I'm almost done with this brick. I'm almost, I've almost taken down the Count of Monte Cristo, y'all. I have around 50 something pages left and it's great. <laughs> At the end of Bookoplathon, for context, I'd read 680 pages of this, so I've read quite a lot this week. It's been kind of slowly plodding through, and then on Friday I had some reading sprints and that really helped, and now I only have five, well, 50, sorry, I almost said 500. I only have 50 pages left. And I will be finishing this today and it will be a glorious moment. Sadly, the meme will be over, but I'm sure there'll be another book that I'll also procrastinate on finishing at some point. I don't know what I'm more happy about, the fact that I've almost finished it or the fact that I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> That's going to be finished today. Also, I am currently reading Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, and by currently reading, I mean that I've read the first two, pa um, two pages, two chapters, wow. I'm having a hard day today with words. Film my TBR, you can see my, my wheel is here. And it honestly took me so long because I just can't seem to string a sentence together today. But yes, enjoying this one so far too, although I don't really have anything to say about it yet. But I have until, I have like three days, I have till Wednesday night, right, to finish these. I think I can make that happen. And also this is the Buddy Read over on Discord and I haven't looked at what people have been saying about it yet because I wanted to start it first. I'm gonna maybe try and get to like the 100 page point and then see what people are saying about this one. But yeah, those are my reading plans uh, for the beginning of this week and I have just filmed my TBR which will have already gone up so you've probably already seen already but it's quite a large page count I think. <laughs> And I had plans to read some other books this month too, and now I'm like, mm, I might have to push them back to May. I, yeah, it's fine. I have some good books I'm reading this month, which I'm excited for. So maybe if this vlog, that was Bella, if this vlog goes over into next weekend as well, I'll have finished these and I'll pick something else up. Let's see. Hopefully it'll be a good week. I've got, I know I'm gonna have a busy week of, of work. Um, so I don't know how much I'll update this week, but I'll try. And here's a Bellatrix to tell you over till then. Hi, I was just about to run myself a bath, I know, shocking, so I could finish The Count of Monte Cristo, but I realized I forgot to show you like the best thing that happened this week. <laughs> Massey just purchased me the best present I think I've ever received in my life. Look at this, y'all. It's a lush bubble bar. It's the comforter one, which is my absolute favorite, and it's literally the size of my head. This is amazing. I don't know how I'm gonna store this, but I wanted to show you it before I actually ended up breaking some off and using it for this bath. But I'm gonna document how many baths I can get out of this, but it's amazing and I love it. And here was my reaction when I first opened the box. Oh my God. Let's see if I can get this out. <gasps> Y'all, the baths I am gonna have. <laughs> So I'm going to try and break a chunk off of it. I might need to like take a hammer to it or something. And I'm gonna have a bath and finish this out and I'll update you with uh, final thoughts. I'm so excited to be finishing this. So I did it. I read it. I finished it. Yay. I think this could be the largest book I've ever read, actually. I don't know. Oathbringer is pretty big and The Stand is pretty big, but I mean, so that's an accomplishment in itself. But I really did truly enjoy my time reading this. I did find it hard to pick up over other books, which we know, but once I was actually in it, I was very invested in this plot. I love revenge stories, so this was always going to be something I was going to enjoy. It was very dramatic. I lived for the drama. The way that the Count sees himself as an avenging angel and doing the Lord's work, and the way that he is so strategic with it and clever with it. There was certainly times where it took me by surprise and I thought I knew what this was pretty well after having just heard of it in pop culture and I think I have seen an adaptation of it when I was a lot younger. I don't fully remember it. The characters were really interesting too and the way that practically all of them are pretty flawed, um, which is always interesting to read, uh, interesting dynamics between the characters as well. I was a little bit worried about the pacing when I picked this up because it's classic and because it's so large, I thought it might be a little bit slow going, but because of the way that it was published originally, the pacing was pretty consistent, there was always something interesting happening and more intrigue as you went 
throughout the book. I'm just so glad I read it. I don't know if I need to tell you what this is because I feel like it's pretty famous. But it's about the Count of Monte Cristo, originally called Dante's, who is incarcerated for a crime he did not commit and he manages to escape the prison, accumulate uh, a lot of wealth and then go and take revenge on the men that put him in that prison. <laughs> if I was to really water it down, but of course there's subplots as well, there's uh, interesting drama between characters and yes, I did it. I took down the beast. Woo! And for my rating, I'm being really picky and I'm giving it 4.5 out of 5 stars uh, just because I did find myself procrastinating on picking it up and that wasn't a 5 star feeling I got from this but I will say the ending did make me tear up a little bit I got a little bit emotional which I wasn't expecting um, but very very entertaining, highly recommend it if it's a classic you're intimidated by I'd say don't be um, it's pretty easy to get into and because of the way that it was written in parts I think it will keep your suspense throughout the first half very much feels like Dante's story and then the second half is when he becomes the Count of Monte Cristo and chaos ensues and yes I really enjoyed my time with this even though it was a long time. <laughs> Can't say the same about this one though. I was enjoying this at the beginning y'all. I'm about 200, I'm 203 pages in. I don't know, I think it might be the pacing but I feel like I'm missing something. I'm hoping we get more answers in the second half but it does kind of just throw you into the action at the beginning which I was enjoying and I was enjoying the relationship between Safi and Isiolt as well. So something's lacking for me and I can't quite put my finger on it. Um, so if you don't know what this is, this is the first book in the Witchlands series reading this for Witchlands Along, hosted by Jade Eyre, J.D. Ray Reads. And in this world there are witches that have different magical powers. Now, Safi, one of our POVs, is a truth witch, which is a very rare type of witch. She can discern the truth from lies. And there is a, like, brimming war happening at the moment. So she's trying to avoid capture, because if she's found by either side, they're going to want to use her gift to gain a political advantage in this war battle feud, whatever. And she's travelling with her friend Isiolt, who's like a lifelong friend, very, very close, and she is a Fred witch. I think the synopsis kind of makes it pretty vague, um, but they're being hunted down by a blood witch and he seems pretty interesting. Also we have a character called Merrick, I'm hoping we get more uh, chapters from him. But yeah, I'm not really sure so far. <laughs> I'm almost halfway, so I'm gonna keep reading this tonight and then tomorrow so I can hopefully finish it before the end of the month. Um, but I'll let you know when I have more thoughts. I don't really, I'm not really sure right now. And then after that, I think I'm gonna pick up Jade City because I'm pretty hyped for this one. So I think this is gonna be the first book I'm gonna read off of my April TBR. Also, this feels quite YA, so I'm thinking something adult afterwards would be good. Um, yeah, I'm hyped for this. Everyone seems to love this series. It's the Greenbone Saga. So Greenbones in this world are, well, on this island, I believe, are people that can use Jade, the stone Jade. And Jade gives them um, almost supernatural, not supernatural, <laughs> superhuman powers, such as their speed and strength will be increased. Um, but we're set in a place called Jan Loon and the city is basically in two halves and we have two rivaling clans, or well, two rivaling families who are green bones who can use this jade. They've been rivals for many years and they're the only ones who can really use jade properly and be green bones. But then there's a modern drug that emerges, which means that foreigners can now use jade, which is a very dangerous thing. And then simmer intention means that there's going to be an open war between these two families. So very excited for it. It gets described as a drama reminiscent of the best classic Hong Kong gangster films. So it sounds really, really good. So I'm yeah very eager to pick this one up. But those are my reading updates and I also quite fancy to do it. An Alcrate unboxing in this vlog because my March box arrived and I'm really excited to open it. And I actually quite enjoyed having it in one of my vlogs previously. So that's what I'm just gonna do from now on, I think. Um, but if unboxing's not your thing, you can of course skip to this time if you'd rather just skip forward. So Alcrate is a YA monthly book subscription box where you get a new release as well as some bookish goodies. I'm a rep with Alcrate so they send these boxes my way. Thank you so much Alcrate for doing that in exchange for an honest review here on my channel for you guys. So I do have a discount code as well which is just my name which is Cody. You can use that at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks so much again for the lovely folk at Alcrate for sending me this. I'm excited. Let's get into it. Oh. She struggles, but she, did. oh, there's the spoiler card. So this is the theme card, is witchy and adorable and kind of cottage corey. And the theme is of witches and wonder. So I'm going to set that aside. First thing is we have in this printed box, it has like a little spell book and stuff on it. So cute. 
it says here reading through the seasons I feel like this could be some kind of cup maybe oh it's like a travel mug cute oh this is cute <laughs> so it has this quote here and it's got like just a clear lid at the top so it says to celebrate the unique beauty found in each of the four seasons we've created a special limited collection of drinkware designed by artist Macarena Chomik our tribute to springtime and its lovely blooms is this stunning tumbler featuring a quote from Sylvia Plath so the quote is cheers spring wait wait <laughs> start again cheers for spring for life for a growing soul isn't that adorable so it's a little tumbler mug we have a lid and it has just like I'll create on the bottom this is very very cute oh we also have a wee pouch which has a lovely design on it it has like a butterfly the quote says magic is desire made real and this is a bookmark holder a place to store your bookmarks that's cute I usually put mine I've got like a little Alice in Wonderland cup up there but it's getting full so this could come in handy also could it maybe good for like glasses um or <laughs> a remote control I don't know I'm sure it has many uses. So it's been inspired by a discovery of witches, which I didn't love that first book, guys, not gonna lie. Um, but very cute design nonetheless, and it was designed by Amy Mack Illustration. Uh, yeah, so I like this. I've never really seen a bookmark pouch before, but um, like I said, sure has many uses. Just all eluding me right now. <laughs> the next thing, we have this little box here also wrapped in tissue paper whatever it is it smells good oh it's a little perfume oil okay and it's from fiction bath company emmanuel blackberry sage and cypress the label here i have no idea what it's inspired by though oh it's inspired by the forbidden darkwood in the year of the witching which i definitely i, I own i i need to read it i know <laughs> but that does smell good and then in a lovely lovely printed box we have I think, oh, it's a tea bag rest. It's like a trinket tray, but for your tea bags. Oh, yes. Oh, was this specifically made for me? I have been needing one of these, y'all. I've been using like a side plate as to put my tea bags on. Um, but it says here, there's a little witch in all of us. This design is so cute. The fact that it's in a star shape as well. I, I love this. This is freaking adorable. And of course you don't need to use it just for tea bags. You could have like jewelry on it and stuff, but. I love that. It's inspired by practical magic. Of course it is. How did I not know? It's one of my mum's favourite, it's, it's my mum's favourite film. And um, it was designed by Team Alcrate. Oh, so cute. Okay, y'all, but look at this. Look at this. This is like a lo-fi witchy dream that I want to live in. Is this even focusing? I need y'all to appreciate, look. Look how stunning this art is. So it's a spiral bound kind of notebook or sketchbook. Yeah, it's a sketchbook because it has like thicker paper. I have no words. This is beautiful. With exclusive art from Talia Skiles, which is at Sephiras. I will put any apps here on the screen for y'all. And it's a cozy scene featuring a witchy bookworm in the reimagination of the magician card from the Tarot's Major Arcana. But pretty. Okay, this could be my fi Oh, I don't know. These on oh, the travel mug. Y'all, killing it this month. <laughs> okay, and lastly, we just have the pin. They put a pin in each box every month. This one was designed by Icy Designs. It's, of course, inspired by the book this month. And the quote on here says, magic has consequences and is a cute little cauldron. This is this is probably one of my favorite um, pins that Alcrate's done. This box, y'all. Oh, and the book is pretty too. Okay, so I did have an idea of what the book was this month. All I needed to know was that it's witchy. It's Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. Um, it does come signed. It has a cute little bow on it. I always like to check if they have any foiling on. So they've got like a little black bow here. It's a blue naked hardback. And it has lovely lilac sprayed edges. So it's of course an exclusive edition every month, uh, but they have made some slight changes to the um, cover design. All crates edition, we have a slightly darker purple and you have like a moon and some stars and things in the background, which I think is just a really nice subtle change. So I don't really know anything about this apart from that it's witchy and I'm already, yes, intrigued. <laughs> but it says here, Tasman is the most powerful witch of her generation, but after committing the worst magical sin, she's exiled by the ruling coven and cursed with the inability to love. Ren is a source, a rare kind of person who is made of magic despite being unable to use it herself. Sources are required to train with the coven as soon as they discover their abilities, but Ren, the only caretaker to her ailing father, has spent 
spent her life hiding her secret. When a magical plague ravages the queendom, Ren's father falls victim. To save him, Ren proposes a bargain. If Tasmin will help her catch the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, then Ren will give Tasmin her love for her father. Oh, this is gonna be heartbreaking. Of course, love bargains are a tricky thing and these two have a long perilous journey ahead of them. That is if they don't kill each other first. Is it? Is it? Is it though? Is it? I might have to check if it is. <laughs> okay, so in this case, I'm hoping it's enemies or rivals to lovers. Um, not usually my favorite kind of thing in books. However, I'll make an exception. I usually prefer friends to lovers to enemies and then to eventual begrudging friends when they have to work together. That's my sweet spot, <laughs> but I'm hoping. But yeah, this sounds really, really fun. I am interested definitely in reading this one. So we also get an awful letter with it. And then we get the little owl crate leaflet, which has like an interview with the author, interview with a vendor, a playlist photo challenge, all of that good stuff you get in here as well. Also, I think this is new, but they've included this little bookmark here, um, which is an Owlcrate reading challenge. So you have Own Voices, winner of a literary award, last book in a series, comic or graphic novel, reread a favourite, audiobook, a tome and a epistolary novel. And then you can just spell it out here with all of your books that you've read. So they're just like little reading prompts, a little reading challenge, which is a cute thing to include. And then lastly, we have the theme reveal for the April box, which is Ruthless Rivals. And on the back here, it says that every box will include an exclusive bag of coffee from Fable Grounds Coffee. So Matthew will be happy, not much of a coffee drinker, but I'm sure he'll enjoy some of that very excited for that box. I don't think I know what the book is for next month actually, but that is the unboxing. I loved this box y'all. Okay, first off, do I need to, do I need to bring this up again? But this art y'all, <laughs> love it. Also this bookmark pouch is cute. I don't know how much use I'll get out of it, but this I will be using and loving and it's practical magic inspired, love it. The pin is super pretty. I do like the smell of this, but I don't know how much I will use like a rollerball perfume um, just because I'm not in the habit of doing that. And then this travel mug is really cute as well and it's very spring vibes. So I am a very happy girl with this box, y'all. Do let me know what your favorite item was that was included and your thoughts on this book, if you've perhaps already tried it, do let me know. Of course, I will link uh, Alcrate's website in the description down below too, so you can check them out for yourselves. And thank you so much again to Alcrate for sending me this box. I loved it. I don't think that's a surprise. Uh, but yeah, that was the unboxing, y'all. And now I need to go and do some reading this evening, don't I? We also have Raidathon on Saturday happening, and I don't know what I'm going to read. I'm maybe hoping to be done with Jade City by then, um, so that I can pick something new up for the day, but we'll just see what happens. But yeah, I will speak to you later when I have finished this one out and got some into this. So I'll speak to you then. <laughs>
adult and more in my personal wheelhouse. <laughs> also yesterday I started Jade City by Fonda Lee and guys, I'm on chapter nine, page 84, and this is fantastic. We've had a sex scene already, which I wasn't expecting, but it's gonna be clan politics, family drama, people getting powers and not being able to control themselves, which I'm looking forward to. And Tibbs is now on here. Right, I'm just gonna call this update done. <laughs> I'll come back to you later, because I really do need to go back live and continue reading Traitor's Blade, because I would like to read all of this today, but I have some plans tonight with Massey. We're gonna have a little date night in. We're gonna order from one of our favorite restaurants and just have a nice evening. So I want to finish this before then, hopefully. Oh my God, my cats make life difficult. He is now up there. Okay, I'll come back to you later with more thoughts. And also I have a couple of gifts I received this week from friends, which was really, really lovely and really cheered me up. So I was having a hard week and I'd like to share that with you. So I'll show you in a bit, but yeah, gonna go read now. Dinner has arrived. We have nachos. We got tacos. We got beef, chicken, steak, pork, churros and some cheese jalapeno things. Oh, and cocktails. Strawberry and mint daiquiri. And what did you get? And a classic margarita. Hello, my loves, and happy Sunday. I didn't vlog much yesterday because I was having quite like a bad anxiety day yesterday for no particular reason. Uh, but last night was lovely. We had some good food. I had myself a bath. If anyone's interested, the huge comfortable bar is serving me well. I've had five baths. I'm not even halfway through the thing, like in a week. That's great. So if you like the comfort, get the big one, honestly. It's better for value for money, I guess. I did have a couple cocktails yesterday though, which I'm slightly regretting this morning, but I've just joined um, Maddie's sprints. Well, not just joined, we're doing right now the first sprint and I'm making tea because I need more caffeine. Also, please ignore the mess behind me. That is a job for later. <laughs> but Raidathon went well. After Jade's sprints finished, I think I had about 100 pages of this book left. And it did get a little bit slow towards the middle. We had some kind of like side quest that I wasn't all that invested in to begin with because I just wanted our main guy Falcio to be back with his pals. But I have less than 50 pages left and it's got my interest again. This is really good. I realized I did not tell you what this book is about. <laughs> We're following our main character, Falkir, who's a great coat along with his two friends that he's traveling with, Kest and Brasti. And they used to uphold justice in these lands for the king, but then the king was murdered and now the dukes have taken over. The dukes are tyrannical bad people. And since the king's death, the world has gone to shit and the great coats are looked down upon. They're seen as traitors to their king and Falcio was like the one in charge of the great coats. So now the gang of three are reduced to working as mercenaries, but their employer is killed at the beginning of this book and they are framed for it, which leads into a larger conspiracy and shit just keeps getting bad for them in this book. Um, on the back here, it does say De Castell combines the best of Joe Abercrombie and Alexandra Dumas, which made me laugh because I've just finished Count Monte Cristo early this, well, last week. And it certainly could fall into the realm of revenge stories. Falcio is messed up, but I love him. Um, this whole book is pretty messed up, actually, yes, because it's adult fantasy, it is quite gritty. It's being compared to Joe Abercrombie. I haven't read the first Lord trilogy yet, but if that's grimdark, I'd say this is maybe like light grimdark, not that I've read any grimdark really to compare this to. So take what I say with a huge grain of salt. In fact, just take everything I say generally with a huge grain of salt. In my TBR, I held up these violent delights and was like, obviously this is really romance heavy because it's a, you know, Romeo and Juliet retelling. And then most of my comments on that video are like, no, it's not romance heavy. So <laughs> maybe don't always take my word for stuff. But there's a couple of side characters in this that I'm loving. One of them is a horse. I'm not gonna tell you much more but the horse brings me a lot of joy, as does a character called the Taylor, who made these great coats, which I should probably say are actual coats. That's why they're called great coats. They wear a great coat. <laughs> wow, you can tell I'm struggling a little bit today, can't you? <laughs> and these are really special. They can like repel blades. They have like loads of secret pockets with all these different kinds of things in them. And yeah, the book is fantastic. Jade, you were totally right when you said I'd love this. I am loving this. So I only have the last little bit. I'm hoping that I will end up giving it five stars. It may end up as a four, but either way, like I highly recommend this series. I haven't even finished it yet, but I recommend. And also the audiobook is really good too. I've been listening to some of the audiobook yesterday and this morning. And I think the narrator, yeah, it's Joe Jameson. So if you're familiar, 
that's who narrates it. It's really good. Kest has a Scottish accent as well, which makes me very happy. I didn't realize until I started listening. And yeah, very, very happy that I'm loving this one. And I do need to continue with Jade City today as well. So during Maddie's like productivity reading, I'm just gonna be reading because that's what I wanna do today. I'm hoping to finish this, continue with this. I'll give you some more thoughts on this later. And I think I had more things to tell you. Oh, I completely forgot to tell you that I finished Truth Witch on Wednesday night. And sadly, I didn't end up loving it, guys. It was just really confusing to me because there was so much info dump and so much to learn about the world and the politics, but yeah, it read very YA. And I needed more development from the characters. I need to know more about how things work to be fully investing, invested in what's happening to them. Also, a little bit predictable in some of the reveals and a little bit cheesy in places. It just wasn't my fave, but I'm hoping I'll love Wind Witch because one of the characters that I am really interested in is someone called Merrick, who is a Wind Witch. So hopefully, and yeah, I literally would have given this a two star rating if it wasn't for Merrick's chapters. It boosted it up to a three star rating for me. So yeah, a little bit disappointed that I didn't love this first book. It's one where people say that the series does get better with each book, so you know, hope is not lost. <laughs> I don't feel so bad for disliking Wind Witch, which is one of Jade's obviously favorite books, when I'm loving this one so much, so hopefully she'll forgive me. <laughs> so if you have joined in with the Buddy Read this month, or you've joined in with Witchlands along, of course, check out the live show. That will be a thing soon. But yeah, I think that's all I have to tell you for now. I'm gonna go back on these sprints and finish Traitor's Blade. I'm excited to be loving it. I'm also loving this one, so like today's Good day for reading. Sunday, so it's been a whole week since I updated. I do this all the time, right? Um, but yeah, boy has it been a week. We did go out and get Bundits today though. I am in obsessed with that place. I think we all know by now. But I have gone like two to three weeks without having any. If you live in Edinburgh, highly recommend. Also went and got cakes again from the place next door. And it started snowing whilst we were out. But yes, it's been a week. I feel like I have two full-time jobs, one of them being depression. <laughs> Honestly, if I didn't laugh at it, I'd just cry. But I have been making some steps in the right direction to get more help, so yay, all good things. So I'm not gonna dwell on that. I always like to mention it when I'm having like bad mental health spells, but honestly, when have I not been recently? Let's be real. But I have things to show you and things to talk about, so we'll just move on to that, shall we? I was editing this and I realized I never told you, or actually showed you what the presents were that I mentioned. Firstly, Lauren got me something amazing. <laughs> she got me personalized cream eggs. So these were Cody's eggs. They weren't all Cody's eggs because Massey had some, but yeah, we totally have some left in this. Totally. <laughs> Check out Lauren's Instagram. I'll link it down below. Um, she's Fiction Tea and she is the best. And thank you so much again, Lauren. This was a lovely surprise. And then from the lovely AJ, he surprised me and sent me a book that he recently read and enjoyed, which is The Memory Theatre by Karen Tidbeck. It's quite a short one. Um, he was saying that it was very like beautifully written, kind of whimsical, and everyone was like, yeah, Cody will probably like that. And the fact that he enjoyed it so much as well, and we do have very similar taste in books. So I don't know too much about it, but it's set in a world just parallel to ours that exists in a magical realm known as the gardens. It's a place where feasts never end, games of croquet have devastating consequences, and teenagers are punished for growing up. 
like Peter Pan vibes. Uh, for a secret group of masters, it's a decadent paradise where time stands still. But for those who serve them, it's a slow torture where their lives can be ended in a blink. Endlessly inventive, the memory theater takes us to a wondrous place where destiny has yet to be written, life is a performance, and magic can erupt at any moment. It sounds like an absolute gem of a book. And I'm really excited to read it. And thank you so much, AJ. Like the gifts I got that week, really really cheered me up and thank you so much again i will link aj's channel down in the description you should go check it out i don't think he has any content on there at the moment but hopefully he will soon i'm hoping so oh tibbs has joined us oh the both both cats are here oh you can't see for the chair hmm there you go both cats are here it's a party. This chair is so squeaky, I apologize. But I also got a couple pre-orders. Sorry for blocking Bella. I pre-ordered two books that came out in April, one of them being Rule of Wolves, which I think has come out on the last day of March. But this is the next book in The Grishaverse by Lee Badugo. I didn't fall head over heels for King of Scars or anything, but I do have a soft spot for Nikolai. And the ending of that book definitely had me wanting to pick this one up. Also, it's super pretty under the dust jacket, and we know this is a weakness of mine, anything foiled, honestly. Uh, but yeah, I have no idea. I'm not going to read the synopsis or anything because it's just follows on, I think, from King of Scars. But we follow Nikolai, Nina, and Zoya in this series. Uh, Nina's chapters in King of Scars, I really didn't like that much, hoping they're better in this one. But yes, I feel like everyone knows of these books. So that was one of them I got. And the other one was House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, which just seems like my kind of thing. I'm hoping it's weird. Once again, I'm gonna read the synopsis for this one because I don't know enough about it. It just seems creepy, okay? It says, dark, dangerous things happen around the Hollow sisters. Ever since they disappeared as children, only to reappear a month later with no memory of what had happened to them. Odd, eerie occurrences follow in their wake. When Grey, the eldest, goes missing again, Iris and Vivi are left to figure out the mystery History, but they aren't the only ones looking for her. As they brush against the supernatural, Iris realizes that the world that returned them 10 years ago might be calling them back, but just how much horror lies beneath the surface. I think this is YA. I'm saying that tentatively because I'm often wrong, but it seems creepy how there's gonna be like sister relationships. And again, it's quite a short one. So I want, I want to get to that one pretty soon. I wanna get to this one pretty soon. I wanna get to the memory fit. Yep. <laughs> but this week I've been doing a little bit of reading, but mostly I have just been obsessed with The Circle. Been watching all of The Circle. I am really excited for season two of the US one. Really happy with the results of who won The Circle 2. Also watched Drag Race yesterday. I don't know who I'm rooting for. I don't know who I'm rooting for. They're all amazing. I think I have... I do have a top two in mind, but I'm not gonna say it for anyone who hasn't caught up yet, but this is gonna be a tricky finale, right? This decision's gonna be hard. I've also been doing some embroidering, which I think I showed you as I was listening to uh, The Fellowship of the Ring, which I've started and I'm really enjoying. I opted for the audiobook of that because a lot of people told me that's like the most accessible way is just to listen to it. Plus it's a story I already kinda know, obviously from the adaptations, but boy, they made some changes, huh? Uh, but I'm really enjoying it. The songs didn't throw me off. I knew what to expect. It has a charm and a, wholesomeness to it that a lot of my like favorite classics do so I'm really enjoying the uh, Fellowship of the Ring but I have been doing this so I was just finishing off these little like rose winding stitch things which I do not like but that's another one finished uh, I thought I'd just give you a little overview of the ones I've done before so this is another one that I've done this one I think is my favorite that I've done so far but I have started this one and it has the winding rose stitch thing that I'm not a fan of. I really don't like doing these. But this is like the last one I have that's already like pre-designed and it's just a template that you follow. I want to do some of my own. I think I've said that before in a vlog. Um, but I realized that when I said that I hadn't actually been embroidering for like a good couple of months and I've forgotten how to do a lot of the stitches. So just refreshing my memory with this last one. I'm gonna listen to Fellowship whilst I continue with that next week. And I'm probably gonna do some of my own. But let's get into reading updates. So, last time I spoke to you, I was reading this during Maddie Sprints. I finished it during Maddie Sprints and I immediately messaged Jay to tell her that I rated it five stars. Guys, I have a thing, okay? I have a thing for valiant but broken men. Or like valiant but broken characters in general. Um, but this guy, Falcio, oh my heart, he reminds me of a certain bridge boy, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> the characterization in here, the fact that it got me in the feels, I didn't know if it was going to be a five star read for me until the very ending because there were some things that are a little bit circumstantial, a little bit coincidental. In regards to the plot, but I really like the writing style, I really like the humour, 
and I am just so excited to continue in this series. I really like the grittiness and the camaraderie of uh, this friendship. I really like friendship groups in books, you know this. So I, yeah, had to give this five stars and I'm so happy that I loved this book. Um, like I said, there's a few things that I wouldn't say like were the best done. It could have been maybe handled in different ways, but it got that emotional reaction from me, which always makes me want to rate a book high. So there we go. We'll be continuing. I need to buy the sequel. <laughs> and also, y'all, I finished Jade City and the same thing again. We have characters that are broken but just so lovable in their vulnerability. And the way that Fonda Lee writes these characters and their complicated relationships, I loved it so much. The world building's really cool. I will say I struggled with the world building, um, like towards like the midway point. I still didn't really understand fully how the Jade worked. And also there was lots of uh, kind of side characters that I would just confuse in my brain and places and things that I was a little bit lost for a little bit there, but I got it now. It was worth it. It was worth the confusion right there and then. And oh my God, this, uh, yeah, this hurt me. This hurt me, and I wasn't expecting it to hurt me, and it hurt me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm still not gay. But this family and their dynamic and their need for revenge, I cannot wait to read the sequel. Um, it's really interesting um, on like a larger scale as well, I think, where the series is going to go. The second one's called Jade War, so you know it's going to be based around a war. And oh, I'm, I'm scared, y'all. I'm scared. How did Fondly make me care about these characters this much? I do not know, but this was really well written too. The action scenes, it's very fast paced, I'd say, but the action scenes were smoothly done. Also, Fondly is a complete badass, right? She's a black belt martial artist and a former corporate strategist. You do not want to mess with Fonda Lee. But yeah, fair to say I'm a fan of hers and of this book. I cannot wait to read Jade War. Um, yeah, like I said, it was a little bit confusing. It's adults, so just be aware that there is going to be some gruesome scenes. It's also pretty heavy on uh, clan politics. Um, so if politics aren't your thing, you might not like this one as much, but I certainly like it. And yeah, read this one as well. So at least I've read one book off of my actual TBR this month. Uh, because Traitor's Blade wasn't on there. <laughs> but very happy I diverted from my TBR to read that one because yeah, I had two five star reads in a row, y'all. Like, very, very happy with that. I think that's everything I have to tell you. Oh, no, wait. There was the Truth Witch live show uh, last night, which I mentioned last week. I did not expect this vlog to go on this long. Uh, but I'll link it down in the description. I wasn't there because I wasn't feeling great like yesterday. I was not feeling well at all. So I missed it and I'm really sad about it because... I wanted to talk about it, basically. If you did join in for the Witchlands Along and for the Buddy Read, I will link the live show down in the description if you'd like to check that out. And yeah, I think that's everything. But yeah, considering it's Sunday and I don't have anything else to talk to you about, I think I should probably end this vlog here and then start another one next week. But thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me. I hope you did enjoy this vlog. Uh, next week will just be a weekly vlog, hopefully, because I have some time off work next week. So <laughs> hoping I can make, you know, a nice condensed vlog that just goes over one week because honestly it gets a little bit confusing when you do this over a few weeks but for those of you who have made it this far thank you very much if you'd like to leave me an emoji that'd be amazing the emoji we should go for this time um i tell you what leave me an emoji that sums up your feelings about your current read <laughs> like if there's an emoji that can sum up how the book you're reading is making you feel leave that down in the description and then that will make me laugh <laughs> when i see them so yeah if you don't have anything to comment or you just want to let me know you're here leave me something that represents how you're feeling about the book and yeah thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me as always i hope you're doing all kinds of well let's chat in the comments let me know your thoughts on any of the books i've read in this vlog uh what let me know the thoughts on any books that you're currently reading that you think i'd like maybe <laughs> please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to do that <laughs> and i will catch you in the next one my dudes Bye y'all. Look at the little toe beans. Okay. Goodbye my dudes. <laughs>